I don't know if this is some Illuminati sh or if this is some uh, Freemason stuff going on here. So after a couple of days exploring around Dublin, finally made my way down to Turles. Well, close to Turles, we're technically at a place called uh, the Horse of Jockey, which just seems to be in the middle of nowhere, but it's this giant hotel. Me and my uncle, we're sipping on a few pints of uh, the black stuff. A few too many, maybe. We were expected back at the house maybe a couple of hours ago. <laughs> we were set on an on errand to get some Panadol and uh, a couple of bottles of wine. Panadol and, and a couple and of bottles of wine. we still haven't got any Panadol or any bottles of wine. Don't know how we're going to end up, but we'll end up somewhere. <laughs> Three hours later. Hello, puppies. Now listen, you're holding us up here. We've got to f get home to my missus. We were told yeah, to get some Panadol three hours ago. Hey, there's a good pop over the road you should come out to, Leffens Bridge. Tonight. So when, when are we seeing you there? What, oh, what time? Tonight. Tonight? tonight? Was we'll yeah. there? Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've got the money, I've got the time. Excellent. <laughs> We've found this random little pub called Quinn's in a town next to Turles. This is the world's greatest shop ever. Regular corner store. And then through this magical door, we have a pub. I got a panel with plenty of Guinness. After last night's shenanigans with my uncle, he's feeling a bit worse for wear today. So uh, I'm going to go out and explore by myself and go look at uh, an old abbey and see what we can find. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure if I'm even actually meant to be on this land. I suppose I'll realize very quickly if uh, I hear. A shotgun. I don't know if this is some Illuminati shit or if this is some uh, Freemason stuff going on here, but I have never seen a pyramid inside of a abbey. So that's clearly the wall to the abbey, but this doesn't quite line up. That wasn't the main abbey, because the main abbey is down this little forest path in the middle of the field. It doesn't appear to be uh, locked at all. Let's let ourselves in then, shall we? All right, so for context, this is Kilcooley Abbey. Founded in 1182, it was burned during attacks in 1418 and 1445, and then restored by a guy called Philip Olmowayan, who I used to name I cannot pronounce, and his burial slab is found at the front of the altar. Ooh, let's go find that out. That looks pretty interesting. Look at this. Look at this. This is like a Templar Knight's tomb. Look at this guy. That's unbelievable. Now, it should be noted, all the signs at the front said, extreme risk of masonry collapse. Masonry collapse means that the roof is going to cave in on me. Abbey successfully found and infiltrated us get here all i know is that if i had this in my backyard if i lived on any of these these neighboring farms and this is 100 percent where i would be spending my time as a kid running around and exploring every single room nook and cranny in this entire building so fun fact there were never ever any snakes on the irish landmass so you might be wondering okay well what, what happened like how did St. Patrick chased the snakes out of Ireland. Turns out snakes was actually a metaphor for the druids, the pagan druids that, that lived and uh, practiced their religious beliefs here in Ireland. St. Patrick came along, wiped them out, got rid of them all, and uh, yeah, replaced the religion of this continent, this landmass rather, with Catholicism instead. So one of the best things about traveling through Ireland is that you can literally just zoom in on your Google Maps and it'll populate with a bunch of like different historical landmarks and, and curiosities that you can see all around the countryside. The sheep are actually surrounded by an old church, a medieval church and burial site, which we're going to check out right now, because it was just down the road from the abbey, so I thought, why the hell not? So this kind of cross is a very, very unique feature of Ireland. So it's like, this is the Celtic cross, basically. And what it tries to do is it combines the symbolism of both Catholicism, well, based obviously with the, uh, with the cross being represented, with these, basically, traditionally pagan Celtic druidic uh, rune kind of shapes. So this is a cross you'll see that is exclusive to Irish Catholicism. From my understanding at least that it was St. Patrick's kind of way of bringing everyone over to Catholicism when they got rid of the ancient pagan druidic uh, original Celtic kind of pagan religion that was on Ireland. It created a new kind of symbol for the people to identify with. Here's another piece of evidence that you, you can tell <laughs> how old this church is. Look at the doorway. I'm only six foot and uh, I'm bashing my head on the doorway because I'm trying to come in here. People who are a lot shorter back in the day, we've uh, grown quite significantly. But this gives you an indication of like the average height of somebody at that time. Let me try and recant what on earth 
happened last night.